ladies. So we are, uh, well, first of all, thank you for being here with me this morning. I'm, I'm really thrilled to be able to have this opportunity to chat with you. And um, I wanted to offer congratulations for all of you ladies or, or for the Alchemy team in general for being recognized as the 34th property and casualty agency and the 49th insurance broker in the nation. That is amazing. Give yourselves a hand. And that's an incredible achievement. Um, the, this really highlights your dedication and expertise and your commitment to excellence in serving your clients. And here's to even greater success and continued growth. And again, as I said earlier, I'm absolutely honored to be with the team today um, for your Women's Week celebration. And we are gonna be talking about the power of receiving for the modern businesswoman. And we are going to take a journey together today to answer this question, which is what if the key to your success isn't in, wasn't doing more, but in learning to receive. So this is what we're going to be um, pondering at this morning. So let's talk about it. Um, the strength in receiving. So really it's being able to redefine success by allowing yourself to receive support, wisdom, and collaboration rather than constantly pushing forward alone, right? And how many of you get tired of feeling like you have to do it all alone? Um, number two is building resilience through your self-regulation. So shifting from stress-driven reactivity to intentional calm by regulating your nervous system. And number three is setting boundaries to honor your energy. So learn how saying no strategically can empower your yes to what matters most. And the last one is empowering voices. So how do we amplify your voice and others? Uh, fostering a supportive environment where all contributions are valued. So, about a little bit about me. Again, my name is Narissa Sioux, and I have over a decade of experience in coaching, consulting, and training, and I specialize in behavior change, life design, and empowered personal growth. And as a seasoned facilitator of evidence-based mindfulness protocols for the last seven years, I bring a proven approach to fostering resilience and enhancing performance through intentional design and self-awareness. So in a nutshell, I'm really passionate about transformation. And over the years, I've invested heavily in my own healing journey and professional development. And this journey combined with my experience in the corporate world has shown me that empowerment, especially for women, comes from having the right support, wisdom, and the transformational tools. So I'd like to briefly acknowledge that I'm speaking to you from Sesavitam land, uh, honoring their elders, past and present, and the des descendants of the Sesavitam people. I'm a First Nations Ojibwe woman from the Barrens River Band in Manitoba, Canada, originally born in Vancouver, BC, and I've called LA home for the last 20 years. And my background really began in HR and talent management, where I focus on developing and empowering teams for some of the world's top advertising agencies. And today I've channeled all of that experience into my own practice as a performance coach. And my mission is to help women break free from societal constructs and step fully into their power. So I recently learned that many of you are account managers knee deep in the work of dealing with high stakes deadlines and the constant pressure to deliver results for your clients. But today I want to share something that might feel a little, a little counterintuitive, how to redefine success by receiving rather than always giving, pushing, and doing. And before we dive into strategies like nervous system regulation, setting boundaries, and using your voice effectively, I want to zoom out and talk about something bigger, how our feminine psychology fits into a masculine world. And for many women in male-dominated industries, uh, such as insurance, the workplace can feel like a war zone. Uh, and as I understand, you guys have a lot of women, so you have a lot of strength on your team personally. So, um, but in a lot of uh, uh, companies, it can feel like a little bit of a struggle. And why is that? 
Well, in particular, it's because our, our brains are just wired differently. It's our physiology, our neurology. And about 80% of women have more connections between their left and right hemispheres of the brain. And this means that we tend to process information a little bit differently and our emotions uh, process a little bit more holistically. And we feel stress and overwhelm more deeply than men do. Some people call it parallel processing and dealing with data and all the emotions at once. So we just get on overload, just, just complete overload. And I'm sure some of you can identify with that. In fact, as a quick show of hands, how many of you observe the difference in style at work? All right, awesome. I see some hands out there, beautiful. And so now isn't it true now, or excuse me, now this isn't true for everybody. Um, I digress. So for about 20% of 20% uh, of men also have this integration. And remember, about 20% of women have less of it. So it's not true for everyone. But for the majority of women, especially in high pressure environments like insurance, this, this difference is very significant. All right. So when we take our feminine energy, our available, our, which is our availability to connect, create, create flow and collaborate and drop it into an environment that operates on urgency, force and constant output, it's no wonder we feel absolutely exhausted. We're fighting a system that wasn't des designed for us. But here is the secret. Instead of trying to conform to that system, we can leverage our own feminine power to thrive in any environment. And that's what today's talk is about, how to use your natural strengths to create success without losing yourself in the process. So how many of you want to leave conformity behind and forge your own version of success? Anybody? <laughs> All right. So let's dive into it. So let's start with the foundation of everything, which is your nervous system. When you're constantly in go mode, managing clients, deadlines, and the pressure of delivering results, your body is in a state of constant stress. And we know that in your industry, everything feels urgent all the time. And one of my clients, also a senior account manager, uh, came to me completely burned out. Uh, she was constantly stressed, feeling like she had to be on every moment of the day to keep her clients happy. And the truth is when our nervous systems are dysregulated, we're operating in a reactive mode. We're not making the best decisions and we're just trying to survive the day and our future slips away from us. So how do we shift from survival mode into being more intentional? Well, one of the many powerful tools that I share with my clients is breath work. Uh, the Hebrew word for ruach meaning, is meaningful here, and it translates to God's spirit, but also means breath air and when. So um, as I was saying, we're talking about our nervous system, right? So just starting uh, from the beginning. So one of the many powerful tools that I share with my clients is, is breath work. And the Hebrew word ruah, which is meaningful here, it, it literally translates to God's spirit also means breath, air, wind, and it's across many cultures, right? This is not um, particularly a religious thing. It's just a concept that exists in different forms like prana, life force, uh, chi. And in, in my Anishinaabe culture, this concept exists, um, we call it uh, baganinma, uh, baganamwin, there we go. And this word reminds us that with every breath that we take, we are physically connecting to all of creation, grounding ourselves in something greater. And whatever you, whatever name you use for this, something that's, that's larger than yourself is very personal and intimate. And for the first nations people, we call it creator. And so when we practice breath work, we're not just calming down. Um, we're reconnecting with the present moment and the divine 
our spirit and our purpose, which just brings us back into the present moment where you are able to make clearer, more decisive decisions and just feel better. It, it um, elevates your energy level. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to be using the two-step breathing technique where we are going to um, just breathe right where we are. And so I invite you right now to just kind of push back from your chair and we're going to do a little exercise together. And it's not going to be very long, but this is going to be uh, just a little taste of what it feels like or, and how you can kind of shift your day just within like um, a two minute process. So go ahead and just shake out your hands and give your body a good wiggle. <laughs> I know it's early. You guys have probably already got your head in the game for what you need to do today. So let's just take a big collective sigh together. So take a nice deep breath in and then exhale, release. Good. And the breathing that we're going to do, we're going to breathe all through our mouth. And so you're going to first breathe into your belly and then up into your upper chest. And when you exhale, you're going to exhale all through your mouth. So it's like imagining that you are breathing in a circle. So low belly, upper chest, and then exhaling out. So it's going to look like this. And so anybody have uh, any questions? You guys uh, feel comfortable with the breathing? All right, amazing. So go ahead and close your eyes and just gently close your eyes and take a moment to scan your body for any tension. And again, just drop your shoulders a little more, relax your jaw and soften the muscles around your eyes, your forehead and your scalp and feel your whole body begin to settle in as you let go. And we'll start with a simple mouth breathing pattern. So again, breathing first into your low belly, expanding it nice and full, and then up into your upper chest, and then finally exhaling out through your mouth. And remember, it's not about how fast you go. It's the quality of your breath. It's the fullness of the breath. So let's do a couple breaths together. And again, just gently, gently breathing all through your mouth, breathing into your low belly, and then breathing up into your upper chest. And then exhaling out, just exhaling out all of the stress in your body. And as you breathe, just notice how your body begins to soften. And imagine a pure white light energy surrounding your entire body, extending eight to 12 feet in every direction. And this light is bright and nourishing gently feeling the space around you and see how it becomes more radiant and vibrant as you relax and just continue to breathe again, breathing into your belly, upper chest, exhaling out and just allowing this pure white light energy to soothe and energize your body. Just reaching into every space and place that needs a little extra attention today and just let it wash over you, releasing any tension or stress. And as you continue to breathe into your belly and up into your chest, exhale fully, feeling yourself letting go of the need to control, to figure anything out, or to be anywhere else but right here. Just let go of all the deadlines, the conversations, and the long to-do list, and give yourself permission to simply be. And again, just let each breath connect you to the divine presence within you. Feel this energy gently remind you that you are supported and held. And again, with each inhale, receive this breath full of energy. And with each exhale, just release anything that feels tense or heavy in your body. And then as we come to the end of this short meditation, allow yourself to linger in the space of peace and calm just for a moment longer. And then slowly bring your awareness back to your body and wiggle your fingers and toes gently 
And when you're ready, you can softly open your eyes. Good, so just checking in with your body. How do you feel? So raise your hand if you feel a little bit more energized, feel a little bit more relaxed. Good, and about then raise your hand if you feel about the same. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So as you, as you just experienced, this simple act of just stopping to breathe on purpose with some intention has a big impact on your body. And one of my clients actually told me that just practicing uh, this breathing before she had like a, a really stressful call or a big meeting that she had to prepare for really just shifted her entire physiology and the clarity of her mind so that she could walk into that room feeling at her best and most confident. So it really just takes a couple minutes to get into that uh, intentional place where you can feel stronger. So now let's talk about something that's common for high, per high performers, over commitments. So in a fast paced industry like insurance, it can feel like you have to say yes to everything, but over committing isn't a sign of productivity. It's a recipe for burnout, as I'm, I'm sure you guys are well aware. And an executive I had the privilege of coaching was exactly like this. She constantly saying yes to new projects, new clients, new demands, and even personal obligations. She felt like if she didn't say yes, she was letting people down or missing out on an opportunity. But here is the truth. Overcommitment is a cultural cancer, right? It eats away at your energy and it leaves you with little room to truly excel at what matters most. So a study featured in Time Magazine highlighted the contrast between being overcommitted and practicing focused excellence. The findings showed that when we concentrate on what we truly, on what truly matters, our productivity can actually double compared to when we're trying to do it all. This may seem fairly obvious, uh, yet it's a vital reminder for us today as we explore the theme of doing less to achieve more. Uh, so and another senior manager that I worked with who was in charge of managing a, a growing team while handling her own accounts, she felt super pressured, an immense pressure to keep saying yes to every new task um, that her team and clients asked of her. And my goal with her was to shift her from feeling overwhelmed to feeling in control at work. And we didn't want her, we didn't want to compromise her leadership role um, or how much people respected her and being known as highly capable. Um, so we worked on a couple different things. And so if this is something that you would like for yourself, the secret is in the phrasing. And it sounds simple, but it's hard to start when it was never modeled for us or very rarely. So we worked on rephrasing her responses at work in a way that allowed her to prioritize without feeling guilty or losing control of things. And we started with phrases like, I'd love to help, but I'm at capacity right now. Can we revisit this next week? Or this sounds important. Let's see if somebody on the team can take this on right away. And saying no, not right now or later isn't a weakness. It's a strength. And when you say no, you are saying a powerful yes, again, to your highest priorities. So you're not losing anything. So if we really think about it, if we think about it for a moment, if you have a fear of being seen as, as lazy or not committed or driven, ask yourself this question. You know, what looks better to others? Excelling at five things or, or doing 10 things poorly? And that's just in, in your personal bubble, right? So what if you have an assistant or a junior person on your team or an entire team that you're running? Uh, the two hours of training that you can slow, that slow you down on your task list is 20 plus hours of productivity that they can be giving you over the long run. And so it, it definitely takes a little bit of investment on the front end, but it pays off in the long game, which is what we're looking for. So, oops, excuse me. Okay, there we go. 
So a couple other freezings for you guys. So I am, um, I'm currently focused on another high priority project. Can we revisit this later? Or I'd be happy to contribute my expertise. Can we adjust the deadline to ensure quality? And these responses just ensure that it shows your willingness to set uh, realistic expectations around the timing um, and you're giving them information about your availability. And it's also ensuring that you can provide your best work without rushing, which is also really important. Uh, and another ex uh, client of mine, a member of the executive team, realized that she was constantly taking on responsibilities that could have been delegated on her team. And she believed she needed to be involved in every decision. And how many of us do that? We get in the weeds, right? And she, and in doing that, that really left her with little time to focus on the big picture strategy, which is really what a lot of your teams need at, at the higher level. And we worked on creating a strategy where she would pause before saying yes, and instead ask, is this something I need to handle personally, or can I trust my team with this? And she started delegating more effectively, which not only freed up her time, but also empowered her team to grow. And as a result, her team became more autonomous and she had the space to focus on high impact tasks that truly needed her attention. So here's a simple strategy for you. The next time you're asked to take on something new, instead of immediately saying yes, we just take a breath and we practice one of these phrases that we've shared here today. So you can see here, there's a few more examples of phrasing to prioritize what truly matters. Uh, one of my managers uh, that was on my team realized that her constant yeses were diluting the quality of her work and adding unnecessary stress, which we definitely don't need more of. And after she started being more intentional with her commitments, pausing, practicing the phrasing around yes and later, she noticed that her workload became more manageable and she was able to excel at the tasks that aligned with her strengths. Her confidence grew and her team began to view her as a more decisive leader who prioritizes quality over quantity. And that's what redefining success really looks like, ladies. It's, about, it's not about doing more, it's about doing what matters most with excellence. And notice that I, I said excellence and I didn't say perfection because you don't have to raise your hand, but I'm sure there, there's some per other perfectionists out there, right? So we wanna be able to put that aside so that you can do your very best work. So the lastly, we're, we're gonna go over validating your own voice and supporting others. Uh, so as women in male dominated, dominated uh, industry, many of us have had experience experience times when our ideas were overlooked or dismissed. So we start questioning ourselves and sometimes we silence our voices before anyone else can even uh, get, get the chance to do so. I had a client who constantly felt like she was being talked over in meetings and she was frustrated because she knew she had really valuable insights, but she didn't know how to assert herself without coming off as too aggressive. We worked on two things, shifting her language and amplifying other women's voices in the room. She started using simple, non-confrontational phrases like, what I'm noticing is, or here's my perspective. Adding to the, discussing, the discussion, I suggest, and these small phrases allowed her to speak up without feeling like she was pushing too hard. And not only was she heard more often, but she also began to validate her own contributions, creating space for her voice in a way that felt natural and authentic. Another client of mine was in a similar situation. She would present her ideas in a calm and composed manner, but often found that her ideas were taken less seriously than those of her male counterparts. And so we practiced using the language that conveyed confidence without being overly forceful. Simple phrases like, I'd like to revisit an earlier point, or I think this idea offers an important solution. And this made a world of difference for her. She started receiving more respect for her contributions and her ideas began gaining traction in meetings. So here's a couple strategies to amplify your own voice in a way that is confident, but non-confrontational. So the first one is reasserting your idea with confidence. So what does that sound like? 
it could sound like, I'd like to circle back to an idea I shared earlier. I believe that implementing X could streamline our process and provide the solution that we're looking for. What are your thoughts and on moving in that direction? And this particular example reframes your, your contribution confidently, ensuring your ideas get reconsidered without sounding defensive or forceful. And the second one is presenting your perspective with authority because you are the authority, you are the expert in your particular area. And so what this might sound like is, here's my perspective on this issue. From my experience managing similar projects, I believe we should approach this by focusing on A, B, and C to achieve the best outcome. This positions your idea as informed and valuable, hoping, uh, helping you to assess your authority with confidence. And another important strategy that goes along with our theme is amplifying the voices of other women. So when you hear a colleague share an idea, amplify it. Say something like, I think Sarah's point is really valuable and I'd like to build on that. Or Mariah's suggestion earlier made a lot of sense and I think it aligns with what we're discussing now. And by doing this, you create a culture of support and collaboration rather than competition. So here's two ways to amplify the voice of other women effectively. So the first one is acknowledging and building on another woman's idea. So for what this sounds like is, I think what Sarah mentioned earlier about revisiting our marketing strategy is crucial. I'd like to add that we could integrate more data-driven insights to strengthen the approach even further. Sarah, what's your take on that? And this brings the focus back to Sarah's idea. It validates it, it opens up the conversation for further collaboration. And the second one, is reaffirming another woman's contribution in a group discussion. So an example of this is uh, Maria's suggestion about enhancing our customer feedback loop really resonates with me. I believe it's a key factor in improving client retention. Can we explore how we can incorporate that in the next phase of the project? And what this does is it reinforces Maria's idea by aligning it with a concrete project goal elevating its importance. So again, you're edifying her voice. And again, one of my uh, clients uh, started using these strategies in her workplace and not only did it create a stronger team dynamic, but it also elevated her own voice and her influence because people saw her as a leader. And she began to be seen as someone who empowers other, other people, which boosted her professional standing within the company and you can also validate your, yourself in small everyday interactions. For example, during a one-on-one -on -one conversation, instead, instead of saying, I'm not sure if this will work out, um, just uh, allowing yourself to, to share your idea in a positive way and reframing it that way. So in a nutshell, when we amplify each other, we all rise. And by supporting the voices of others and speaking up with confidence, we foster a work environment where collaboration and mutual respect flourish. Beautiful. So just going into the recap of what we have been uh, chatting about today. The first point was regulating your nervous system. So we talked a little bit about how you can do that and how it can allow you to shift from reactivity into intentional clarity. And number two is saying no to overcommitment and saying yes to excellence. And number three is using your voice to validate yourself and amplify others to greater collaboration and influence. And number four is moving forward pause before saying yes. We're going to practice stopping to breathe intentionally and amplifying others. But beyond that, I want you to walk away today with the understanding that as women, we don't have to conform to a system that wasn't designed for us. Instead, we can lead with our natural strengths, our ability to connect, collaborate, and create flow in our systems. That's the true power of receiving. When you create space for yourself, you create space for others. 
And that's how you redefine success. So as we have discussed, when you take the time to regulate your nervous system and set boundaries that protect your energy, you confidently use your voice to support both yourself and others. So here's my challenge for you, ladies. What are you going to bring to life? Which part of this um, um, chat today that we've had is going to be most applicable for you? So the first one would be phrasing, which is delaying your yes, uh, saying yes and, or even saying no. <laughs> uh, a second one is training a junior or sharing a skill with a colleague so that you can all collaborate a lot easier. And number three is doing a little breathing in the moment before, before a big moment and after a big moment, either or, whenever you can remember. And, ampli and the last one is amplifying the voice of other women. So I would love for you guys to comment in the chat so we can all support each other and make it a company-wide game that you play um, for, the next, for the next week or so, or for as long as it, it, it uh, serves you guys. So again, just dropping it in uh, the chat right now. Which one are you ready to put into play? I love that. So we see a little bit of breath work. Excellent. Sharing a skill with a colleague, amplifying the voice of another. I love that. Delaying your yes. That one is really powerful. We learned about how powerful that one can be. Phrasing and the power of saying no. I love that. Oh, and Jennifer says, our team is great at amplifying and validating other suggestions as well as sharing tips and tricks. I love that. That, that is creating a culture of accountability. That's really powerful that your team is, is good at that. I love that. All right, anybody else want to weigh in on what they're going to uh, put into play today? Yes, breath work. We can definitely do some more breath work together as well. I'd love to. Okay, so just add, and that is your challenge. So the next thing is just kind of opening it up for questions. So if you guys want to come off mute, um, you know, feel free to take yourself off mute and I would love to answer any and all questions that you have. Like what questions do you have about how you can apply these strategies in your own work? You know, whether it's about navigating your current role, finding balance or anything else that we covered today, this is your time to ask. So uh, let's dive into your thoughts and ideas. How do you find balance um, or like in setting your boundaries? Um, in balance and finding and setting your balances uh, between. Oh, I guess, sorry, let me rephrase. How would you, you know, like find that work-life balance with setting boundaries? With setting boundaries? You know, honestly, I, I believe that balance, work-life balance is kind of a fairy tale, right? Does anybody else feel, uh, feel that way? <laughs> And, uh, and the reason why is because we said it earlier, like one, one of the things is creating flow, right? And so in, I might not necessarily feel like balance more than just a flow. So it is creating, creating a flow where you feel like, okay, I can get, I can achieve this and I am going to have a healthy stopping point so that I can also have some fun. I can take care of myself because if we're not doing the self-care on the back end to really take care of ourselves, then we can't show up, um, uh, for our best. And, oh, and Phyllis says you have to have downtime. A hundred percent agree, Phyllis. That is, that is it. It's just, it's forcing yourself to turn it off because it, the work is going to be there tomorrow. Right. And I do understand that some of the things are, are deadline focus. And there's, there's also got to be times when you take care of, of your body and, and refresh yourself, which is why breath work is, is one of those practices that really helps you tap into a greater sense of energy and clarity. Great question. Thank you, Sammy. Anybody else? Oh, asking for help is difficult when you know your whole team is going through the same amount of stress. Uh, that's a really good point as well. So I feel like if we are not 
articulating and we're not communicating how much stress we're under it's not necessarily that um you know just because we're sharing where we're, the expectation is that we're asking other people to take things off of our plate however if you share what the major stresses are then you are able to collaborate and maybe somebody is working on something similar and you guys can shift the load around a little bit right but if you're not communicating with each other about the stress about the projects and you're keeping it all internalized then then that just means that there's a heavier burden on your shoulders and ultimately you know studies have shown that that women get more auto autoimmune disorders and um, illnesses from suppressing their anger their stress just emotion in general right so that stress is, has definitely got to go somewhere whether we're talking about it with each other we're uh, to share resources we're taking that downtime like uh, phyllis was saying and we're just making the time to to downshift it and then uh, let me see michelle says do you find that these tools transfer from work to home absolutely these these this is a universal way. Like when we learn to communicate as women from this place of, of power and we're defining, uh, we're able to discern kind of what we need and, and what we can do because we all have a, a finite amount of energy during the day, right? And so these skills are 100% translatable into your personal life as far as being able to set healthy boundaries and, and learning to, to ask for help. Because how many of you have a hard time asking for help? All right. I like a lot of us. Right. And so it is, it's that there's a skill that we learn to be like, okay, you know, I could use some support on this. This is what it looks like. Right. So great questions, you guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, anything else? Any other questions? All right. Wonderful. Well, I certainly appreciate you guys spending some time with me today. And your feedback, it really means the world to me. So I would love for you to share your thoughts so I can continue to improve this topic for other women in business. And let's stay connected. You know, you can scan the QR code and follow the link uh, in the chat um, to leave your feedback. And actually the link is not in the chat, it's right here on the board. So you can go to narissasu.com forward slash feedback. And when you fill out the feedback form as a token of my gratitude, I am going to share a special meditation with you, which I will just email out to you within the next couple of days. And this will be just a, a helpful reminder of our time together and hopefully bring you a little peace of mind and some clarity whenever you need it. And again, I truly appreciate your attention and energy today because I know you're all really busy. And if you take one thing away from today. If you can remember one thing from today, let it be this. When you create space to receive, you're not only empowering yourself, you're lifting everyone else up around you. Beautiful. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Narissa. You're so very welcome. Have a wonderful Halloween. Yes. Happy Halloween, everybody. And yes, we, I can definitely figure out how to make the uh, recording available for you guys, because I know some of you uh, entered the room a bit late. Um, so I will make arrangements with Sammy to make that happy, happen. And again, please uh, do fill out the feedback form. Again, that one was the narissasu.com forward slash feedback. And I will get you the, um, the meditation that I prepared for you guys. And I would just love to hear from you. So. Amazing. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and happy Halloween. All right. Bye. Great.